Somebody say reality check. I don't know if you realize it or not, but this world is in a mess. If you've been watching the news at all, you know this world is in a mess. If you're alive, you should know this world is in a mess. This world is in trouble. And we don't hear a lot said today about the rapture, the tribulation, the second coming of Christ, the end times, the thousand year reign, the new millennium. We don't hear about these things. Churches aren't talking about it. Pastors aren't talking about it. As a matter of fact, more churches are closing in America than any other time in our history. Christians are being persecuted more than any time in world history. I'm jumping ahead, but approximately one stat I read, I think on the screen, I'll show it in a moment, says 100,000 are martyred, killed, murdered, put to death every year just because they say, I am a Christian. Another stat said 300,000. I used the conservative number on the screen. But the reality is a lot of people in this world don't have a clue what's going on. But the Bible gives us clear indications of what's happening. As a matter of fact, in Matthew 24, Jesus, the disciples ask him, tell us what is the sign? How will we know the end? when you're coming back how will we know and there's a long discourse of signs warnings red flags that we can read in the Bible and when you read that in Matthew 24 and then you look at the newspaper or the news and just kind of follow the what's happening in our world today you see well that's just what the Bible says and in that passage in Matthew 24 Jesus said these words don't miss it he said see that you are not troubled and it's, it's normal. It's human nature for us to hear all this stuff that's happening and to, and to be troubled. But it's prophetic. It's biblical. The Bible tells us that these things are going to happen. And what I want to do these next few weeks, and Rita did a great job last week. I watched by, by the Internet and tuned in. Isn't technology great that we can do that? It makes the world a small place. But what we want to do these next few weeks is just give you a little warning and say, hey, the bridge ahead, it's out. And if you keep headed in the same direction, at the same pace, there's a great gulf between this side and the other side. The bridge is out. And we as the body of Christ, we as Christians, we must build some bridges. Because some folks are going to fall off the cliff. So I want to sound the alarm. I want to put out the warning sign. I want to give you a reality check. I want to give you some verses. And I want to lay some foundation last week and today about what's happening prophetically in the world and where we are and what we can expect. Does that make sense? Second Peter chapter 3, several verses of Scripture. New Living Translation, here's what it says. I want to remind you that in the beginning... Did I miss that? That in the last days... Everybody say last days. Now, I know people don't want to hear this. They want to think that things are going to continue always as they were. But these are last day signs. I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come, mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming? How many of you ever heard the statement, Jesus is coming back? You ever heard that? At least once. Well, they're going to say, what happened to that promise that Jesus is coming again? 
from before the times of our ancestors. Everything has remained the same since the world was first created. In other words, where is that promise? Because nothing's changed. Everything just keeps on going along. Is he really coming back is what the scoffers are saying. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and new earth. He has promised a world filled with God's righteousness. While you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. Let me read that again. But we are looking forward to the new heavens, the new earth that he has promised. A world filled with God's righteousness. And in the meantime, while you're waiting for these things to happen, because right now, that's not where we are, is it? Right now, there's no new heaven. There's no new earth. We don't have a world filled with God's righteousness. There is chaos abounding everywhere. And while you're waiting for these promises to come, while you're waiting for the new heavens and the new earth, while you're re- waiting for a world filled with God's righteousness, filled, what does filled mean? Full of his righteousness. That doesn't mean just a little dab will do you down here in the bottom somewhere. I'm telling my age. Somebody knows me right there. While you're waiting for these things to happen, make every effort for you, for us, for the body of Christ, to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. Therefore, so be on guard that you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose your own secure footing. Rather, grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grow. I might add to that and say, grow up. Get rid of the pacifier. Get rid of the baby bottle. Get past the diapers. You know, I've threatened for years to preach a message entitled Grow Up, the whole thing. And just get the crib out and the high chair and the little baby spoon with rubber on it, you know, that little plastic rubber, you know, that won't hurt you. Because some folks, they will hurt themselves no matter what. When Paul. When the Philippian jailers got him and, and, and the prison doors were opened, he said, do yourself no harm. Don't hurt yourself. We're all here. Let's go on. Caution. If you ever see caution signs, they're usually in yellow, right? They're warning signs. And here's the caution today. We don't know when the end is exactly going to be. We don't know when Christ is coming back. The Bible says he's going to come like a thief in the night. A thief comes at the time that you would least expect. And that's when Christ is coming back. But let me tell you, he is coming back. What we are experiencing will not always be like this. It won't always be like this. Our faith is under attack. And there are warning signs that indicate we are living in the last days. I don't know about you. I don't know if your faith is is under attack at your work or in your family. But on the world scene, Christians are being persecuted just because they are Christians. In Matthew 24... And I want you to read this whole chapter sometime during this week. Make it a point to read it. Read it in several translations. Use it part of your, as part of your devotion this week. But in Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, his disciples came to him and said, Tell us, when will all of this happen? What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? And we don't like to talk about the world coming to an end, do we? We just like to be happy and comfortable and just, you know, just live our life. But let me tell you, the bridge is out ahead. The warnings are being given. They're all around us. They are prophetic. It's happening. We are living in the last of the last days. I thought I could get at least one amen right there. It's okay. He said, what are the signs of the coming? Well, here they are. These are found in, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 24. First of all, false prophets.
They're everywhere. Did I do that right? I did. False prophets. There are a lot of false prophets. And they'll tell you one thing. The gospel's not really being preached in a lot of places anymore. Some of the churches have become country clubs. This is supposed to be a salvation station. A place where people can get saved, where people can be healed, where ministry goes forth. And really, what ought to be happening on Sunday is when we come in here on Sunday, it's to celebrate what's been happening all week long. All of us are ministers, every one of us. Oh, you didn't hear me. You're a minister. If you're saved, you are a minister. You should have a ministry. Your life ought to be a testimony of who he is and what he is doing. So there's false prophets everywhere. There needs to be some true prophets. In Matthew 24, beginning in verse 4, Jesus told them, "Don't Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. Mm -hmm. They will deceive many, and many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Um, Did you realize, I didn't know until I started doing some research for this, but there have been over 800 people claimed to be Jesus Christ, the Messiah, to coming back in the flesh. Over 800. Some of them are a little more notable than others. Jim Jones, you remember him? He's the Kool-Aid guy. David Koresh. Louis Farrakhan. Nation of Islam. At one point, I heard him say, I'm Elijah. And then a little bit later, a few weeks later, I heard him say, I am Jesus Christ. And then there are new age groups. I tell you, there have been a lot of folks. There was another guy. He, I don't remember his name. It was Appleby or Applegate or Apple Pie or something like that. Apple something. And he ended up committing suicide, if I remember. But he claimed to be the Christ. And what's amazing is how many people these guys get to follow them. I'm, I'm out. There I go. In again, out again. You put your right foot in, you take your right foot out, you put your right foot in. Turn it all about. You do the holy pokey, turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. (laughs) All right, keep that one ready just in case it goes out again. (laughs) But what amazes me is how people will follow these idiots. And they'll move off somewhere and give them all their money. Get all, get, their, get all of their checks going into that guy's bank account, and then they'll drink the Kool-Aid. I don't get it. I don't get it. There's only one. There's only one Messiah. <clears throat> Another caution is, he said, when the, when the disciples asked Jesus, how will we know you're coming back? How will we know? He said, there's going to be wars. War? Well, there's no wars on planet Earth, are there? I mean, there's just peace everywhere. You know what I read this week? This is going to shock you. Grab your chair because I don't want it to run off when I say this. But the United States is engaged and involved in 74 wars right now. 74 that we don't even know about. We're either in war or we're supporting somebody that's in war. So we're involved in 74 international conflicts right now the United States and we know about some of those Matthew 24 verse 6 says you will hear of wars and threats of wars but don't panic somebody said don't panic don't panic don't Don't worry don't be troubled there's several translations here you're gonna hear about these wars but don't panic don't worry yes these things must take place but the end won't follow immediately Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Is that happening? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Well, death tolls are rising in this century. Countries are developing weapons of mass destruction. The terrorist threat is like it's never been before. As a matter of fact, 
after I did this message, then some other things took place. We've gone and bombed Iraq again just since I prepared this message. And there was a videotape that was released by a terrorist organization just, I think it was Friday, that they are coming to America and they won't be satisfied until they have the Islamic flag flying at the White House. Syria is in civil war. Russia's threatening war with Ukraine. Islamic ISIS terrorists attacking Iraq. And there they have driven out tens of thousands of Christians and told them either convert or die or get out of here. Sudan has been in a civil war to the point that their nation has split. Now they're southern, uh, southern Sudan. Don't tell me there's not, these are not signs of the end. These are biblical signs. Ukrainian rebels reportedly shot down the Malaysian commercial jetliner. I mean, you get on a commercial airplane, you think you're going to be safe. U.S. Embassy evacuated in Libya due to heavy violence. Not to mention the Benghazi fiasco a year, a year and a half ago. Hamas attacking Israel. When I went to the presidential palace three days ago in Honduras, there were protesters outside the presidential palace, and I said, what's going on? There were three news channels there. When I came out, they wanted to interview me about the adoption and the meeting I had. I said, no, 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 we're not going to interview anybody, no. I'm not going to muddy any waters. I said, but what's going on out here? Because at the gate, there were protesters. And they said, oh, they're pre protesting um, the alliance between the United States and Honduras because the United States is supporting Israel against Hamas. And they were also protesting at the U.S. Embassy in Honduras. What else? In Matthew 24, he said, in the last days, there's going to be famines. Not enough food to go around. Matthew 24, verse 7. So let's look at it. Did you know that there are over 7 billion, 250, right about 250 million, 7 billion people and a quarter on planet Earth? Did you know that? And the world population, 5.7 of those, which is over 80%, about 81, 82% of the world population, lives on less than $2 a day. And you thought you had a financial problem. Turn to somebody and say, we are blessed. As a matter of fact, let me just, let me just rephrase that. Look at me. Look at me. You are rich. <laughs> you are rich. That was pitiful applause. But <laughs> If we're going to do it, let's do it. You are blessed and highly favored. Now, you may have... You may have some economic challenges, but let me tell you, it's real simple. Spend less than you take in, and everything will be fine. It's just that simple. It's just pure, simple math. If you make $100 a week, don't spend $120. It's just that simple. But over 80% of the population lives on less than $2 a day. Christian farmers are being driven out of Zimbabwe and foreigners are coming in replacing the crops with drug crops. As a matter of fact, over 25% of the drugs from, uh, that are coming around the world are coming from Africa, from the African continent. And southern Sudan just came through this civil war. They split the country. And because of that, there is a famine in Sudan. And then, of course, I wish I had time to talk about pestilences. It's in that same verse. Famines and pestilences in Matthew chapter 24, verse 7 and 8. What's a pestilence? Ebola could be categorized right there. Over a thousand people infected. How many people can a thousand people infect? Folks, this world is in a mess. And here's what we always say well, it won't happen to me. It's there. That's, that's over there. That's in Africa somewhere. That's not going to affect me. 
Well, did you know there are cases in the United States? They flew in. They're here. They're in Atlanta. Less than a two-hour drive from where you're sitting right now, there are some infected cases of Ebola. And only 10% of the people that, are, that contract that survive. There's a 90% death rate. I'm trying to tell you to wake up. The bridge is out ahead. Wake up. What else? Earthquakes. Well, we hadn't had any earthquakes in Chattanooga lately. Oh, there have been some tremors. As a matter of fact, a few years ago, I used this scripture. It's probably been, probably been 14, 15 years ago. I did a series on the last days. And at that time, Rick and Kim, you were there in, Chatt- in, in Gadsden. In that time, I did research, and the stats were that there were over 20,000 earthquakes reported a year 20,000 so as I began to study for this I thought well I I wrote down 20,000 but when I researched it guess what 500,000 earthquakes are now occurring on planet earth 500,000 a year and a hundred thousand of those are detectable by people like you and me the other 400,000, the other 80%, the scientists, they can detect them. 10,000 people are dying annually due to earthquakes. More earthquakes than any other time in history. And just to put it in perspective, from 1890 to 1900, a little over 100 years ago, there was only one major earthquake in the world. One. One. And now they're saying over 500,000. Don't tell me that we're not in the end times. The Bible says, I just showed you this verse, there will be earthquakes in many parts of the world. This is prophetic. This is biblical. These are warning signs. The disciples said to Jesus, tell us, how will we know the end of the times? And this is what he said. And then he said there's going to be tribulations. Now, this makes some folks nervous. You know, the earthquakes, those are happening other places. That's not affecting me. The famines, those are in other places. That's not affecting me. The pestilences, Ebola, that's not affecting me. But let me tell you something, folks. Tribulations will affect you. These other things will affect you. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm not trying to make anybody mad. I'm not trying to be a nut, a religious nut. Boy, y'all are quiet today. I'm just trying to tell you, this is what the Bible says. What does it say? In Matthew 24, verse 8 and 9, but all this is only the first of the birth pains, with more to come. Somebody say, oh my. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. That's happening right now. As a matter of fact, There's more persecution towards Jewish people right now than there's been since the Holocaust. It's happening. It's starting all over again. There are Swazi flags in in Germany. There has been persecution in Germany again like they've never seen. As I began to study this this week, I was amazed at the persecution that's coming towards Jewish people, God's chosen people, Israel. And you saw... Less than a month ago, Hamas is bombing Israel right and left, shooting their rockets into the, into the city, into Jerusalem. And Israel sent out, um, the, uh, the prime minister sent out a notice and said, we're going to give you 24 hours or 48, I forget whichever it was, to stop. And then we are going to start defending ourselves. And the world has criticized Israel for defending themselves. And even some of our own political leaders in the United States are criticizing Israel for defending themselves and not standing with Israel. It's real simple. The Bible says God will bless those that bless Israel. and He's going to curse those that curse Israel. It's very simple. I'm telling you, it's a scary day. When we are not aligned with Israel. But there is criticism, there is hatred toward Christians 
and towards Jews. It's happening. And he said, you will be hated all over the world because you are my followers, and many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. You need to read Matthew chapter 24. So millions are persecuted every, persecuted every year. Christians, China, Sudan, Africa, Saudi Arabia, even North Korea, Russia, and many Muslim nations. In Iraq, or yes, in Iraq now, the ISIS there, uh, they've driven out over 10, 20,000 Christians. It's terrible. And um, Miriam Abraham, she was kidnapped, imprisoned, sentenced to death by hanging because she left Islam and turned to Christ, became a Christian. And she just came to the United States just a few days ago. You probably saw that. ISIS is raping women, hanging men, and beheading children because they're Christian. 100,000 Christians killed every year. And over one million children are persecuted because they are Christians. So let me give you a caution. In the last part of Matthew 24, he says, The gospel will be preached throughout the world. That is happening now. In little villages and hamlets all over the world that don't even have running water or electricity, they have generators and computers and satellite dishes. And our service right now, this very moment, is being streamed live around the world. And people anywhere on planet Earth that have a computer and internet can receive this service. Through the television, through the radio, through missionaries, through the latest technology, the gospel is being preached around the world. And this was one of the last signs that Jesus gave. He gave all these warning signs, but he also said, and at the same time, the gospel is going to be preached around the world. Let me tell you, it's happening right now. It's been over 20 years since I first went on television. For 15 years, Reed and I had a national television ministry. For 15 years. And the first time I went on TV... I preached to more people that one day than my granddaddy preached, and he lived to be 90 years old. And he preached. He organized over 67 churches in his ministry, and he preached all over the United States. But the first time I went on television, just once, over 20 years ago, I preached to more people that one day than he preached in 90 years. I'm saying that to tell you this scripture is being fulfilled. There it is. The good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all the nations will hear it and then the end will come. Amen. We're there. We're there. And Jesus said, don't be troubled. Don't panic. It's easy to watch the news and say, my God, what's happening? The world is in a mess. What's going on? Or, are we going to come out of this? Let me tell you, I don't know what's going to happen. I just know that I read the last page and we win. Touch somebody and say, everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. The gospel has been preached throughout the world via the television, the radio, the mission efforts, the internet. It's being preached. Sin will be rampant everywhere. And the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end... He will be saved. Sin will be rampant everywhere, and the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end, the one who doesn't give up, the one who doesn't quit, the one who doesn't throw in the towel, he will be saved. Does that help anybody? Now is the time of God's favor. Now, today, is the day of salvation. Are you ready to pray? Amen. Lift your hand. Pray this prayer. Make it yours. Father God, I believe your word. I believe that you sent Jesus, your only son, to this world so that I could be saved. Forgive me of every sin come into my heart fresh and new today I want to serve you I want to spend eternity with you anoint me and help me to live righteous 
and pure in your sight. Help me to make a difference in my world. And I'll serve you all the days of my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for helping me. I give you praise. I worship you. I adore you, Lord. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. Now say, devil, Satan, I renounce you. Leave me alone. Get off my back. I'm through with you. I belong to Jesus. I'm saved. Now say, thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you glory. In the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Would you praise him? Would you bless him? The bridge is out ahead. But the bridge builder, Jesus, has come. And I need to remind you, he walks on water. Are there any water walkers in the house today? I wonder how many of you prayed that prayer for the first time or in rededication that we just prayed together. You lifted your hand and you prayed it with me either for the first time or in rededication. Anybody? Could I see your hand? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Praise God. Would you give the Lord praise? Hallelujah. Here's what we're going to do in closing today. We're going to have personal worship moments in just a moment. We have just a few minutes left. And the communion stations are up. And some of our staff is set up to serve you. We're going to receive our offerings and our tithe. And then I want you to just take a moment of consecration. When we receive communion, it's a time of consecration. And if you want to do that or if you want to kneel where you are in your seat or you want to come forward, some of the staff will join me and we'll be here to pray with you. But I want us to realize that the bridge is out ahead, but Jesus is the bridge builder. And we have an opportunity to make a difference in our world all around us. There are people that don't have a clue. Now, in the next several weeks, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the second coming of Christ. These are the foundations. These are the signs today. This is how we know we're, we're getting close to the end. You say, well, when's it going to happen? I don't know. The Bible says no man knows the day or the hour. He's going to come like a thief. But pretty soon now, he's going to come because the signs are set. Things are in place. It could happen today. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen next month, next year. It might be 5, 10, 20 years. It might be 100. I don't know. But I just know that these signs are being fulfilled and we are here we are in these last times so I'm going to talk to you about the rapture the tribulation the second coming of Christ the thousand year reign all these things are found in the Bible in Daniel and in Revelation there's parallel and I'm going to give you some of these prophetic end time prophecies and let you see for yourself how close we are So today's foundation. Last week was foundation. So get your family and friends to come the next few weeks and be here and be a part of this. Are you ready to worship the Lord with your offerings and gifts? Get your tithe ready. We are blessed to be a blessing. I told you a little while ago, you're rich. Over 80% of the world lives on less than $2 a day. We're blessed. We're blessed. We just need to learn how to handle what we have and be good stewards. And the best way is to start off by being a tither. The Lord requires us to be tithers. 10% of what we make, we're supposed to give back to Him. And then give an offering of your own choosing above and beyond that. It's required. And the Bible says it all belongs to Him. We're only stewards. So what you have in your pocket, in your bank account, between your mattress it all belongs to God it's not ours it's his can I get amen Amen. it's it's his it's not ours it's his did I say that right did I say that wrong it all belongs to him 
it's not ours so we're stewards and he wants us to be faithful and as we are he will increase the blessing and he rebukes the seed eater for our sake so get your tithe ready 10 percent get your offering father we just bless you today we thank you so much for your faithfulness we thank you lord for the truth the revelation that tells us what the signs of your coming are and we know this world is in a mess but you're coming back for us like you promised help us lord to do our part until you come to be faithful to be witnesses to be ministers to tell our family and friends to be an example use us give us strength father in the name of jesus and we thank you lord for this day and for this reality check we know the bridge is out but we know that you're the bridge builder and we give you praise in jesus name amen